In this video, I want to show how to use Honeywell Enterprise Provisioner on installing two apps. In this case, we use Workspace ONE Launcher and Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub. We configure the Wi-Fi and we enroll the device. So let's start with that. So first we choose the device. In this case, I have an EDA 52. So we just select the package with the newest version here. So it's shortly taking some time to load, but once it is loaded, so now once we have loaded that, then we can go to the device config. In this case, we want to add some Wi-Fi settings. So we go with wireless and network, Wi-Fi, supplicant, Wi-Fi profile one. So now we put in the SSD, which is in this case, home. So the association mode is WPA. So, and then the PSK key. So that is that one in that case. So once we've done that, you see it's an in, in, encrypted stored here, so we can't directly see that. In case of you want to add some CA certs, client certs, you can add that here. In this case, I have DHCP, so we don't need to put something in here. Um, this would be then um, the device config. Um, as Wi-Fi itself should be enabled, so we can go here and check that it is enabled. In this case, it is enabled. If I want to add that to the QR code, I can just click once, then it's removed, and then it's added X or to the XML in case it is not enabled by default. So this would enable the Wi-Fi then. This is now my device config. I can also add some other settings, but for now, I think this is quite OK. So let's go to the provisioning. First, we have to make sure that clear all tasks is selected. Now we just create a task. So let's start with the first task, which would be wait for network, yeah? because we first need the, the network. So we select wait for network, and that's our first task. Then we create another task, which would be we download a file. So just to go in here, we go with file, and we download the file. In this case, I want to download the Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub, which is hosted under my URL here. I just go in here, delete that one. So now I put, it, put in my public URL. And this file is now getting downloaded to the download folder and it's called then Node agent. So I just copy that over and we create another task. So just create a new task. This task is now exactly installing that application file. So once we have downloaded that, we just directly install it. So with that settings, we wait for the network, we download the file and we install the package. So now let's use, let's install an additional one. So we go in, we go with file, so then we type in the URL of the other one, which can be an internal one if it's reachable, or in my case, it's a public URL, which is the launcher in this case. And I put also the launcher directly in the download folder, and that's it. Once it is installed, we could also um, yeah, remove that. So we delete the file. In my case, I will just keep it here. So then once it, this is there, I just need to copy that URL and then paste it here in again. So just to summarize again here, we, we installed that application file now. Um, once we have um, done all that, we need to set the device owner. Yeah, so we need to go to works. So we create an additional task. There is set device owner. So the component name in this case is that one. And then we put in the name. In this case, we need to make sure that we have the 
server URL. And the value in that case is my DS server. So then we just add an item here. So the next one would be the group ID. I use JIT for that. Then the next one would be the username for staging. In this case, it's just UN and the username. Why staging do this? Called just stage here in this case. And the password was just, just PW, which is now in this case the staging user. The password is in this case just set to one, two, three exclamation mark. So once we have done that, all these settings are there, so that was one too much. So we see that um, all the data types and all that are there. Also, we can just edit that. Yeah, if we want to change it again, something like that, that's all possible. Yeah? So now we have all these settings. We have the right border. We could just add additional um, yeah, additional things here, but in this case, we are already good. So let's generate a barcode for that one. So once we go with barcode, then we, so we include the tasks in this case. We include the device config. Uh, so we have from the provisioning all the things, we have only fields that are non in default state in the settings. Uh, so in case we have settings that are yeah, that are in default. We don't um, use them in the barcode and we have added the device config. So, and with that done, we can click to generate barcode. And you see it's generating a barcode. And this barcode can now be used to directly enroll in device with my staging account and all that. If you want to export that, there is file export. So you can export this um, QR code. Also, you can modify um, the settings and all that. Just be aware if once you export, and that's important, it will update th this server details here above. Yeah? So the source IP is always the client IP in this case. So once you export and import again, you may need to make sure that this URL is still the same because it will update automatically to the local IP address of the client. So make sure that this is, once you import it again, is correct, but then you can just export it and import it again. Also the settings, you can just change them. Yeah, for example, if you want to go to Bluetooth and you want to disable it and you just want to generate a barcode, you just go to options, you click again, generate barcode, and it's generating a barcode with the new details that you have selected. In case of you have more options, you have more QR codes. So maybe just if we would put away that fields, so all options are getting displayed then, and we generate again a barcode. And then you can see, you see four QR codes, which you can switch here from one, two, three, and four. They need to scan all four QR codes. Still, it doesn't matter in which order you scan. Yeah, So you can start with four, you just need to, um, Make sure that all the QR codes are scanned. This was a little overview of Honeywell Enterprise Provisional with Workspace ONE UEM to have in this example, two apps installed, the Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub and the Workspace ONE Launcher and having the device enrolled 